Hello everyone, my name is Wendy. In this video, we will look at how to create a pop-out effect in GIMP. I'll be using Windows in GIMP 2.10.22, which is the latest version of GIMP at the time this video was created. If you'd like to follow along, I downloaded this image from freepick.com and I'll leave a link in the description. So let's get started. This pop-out effect is very easy to create. All we need to do is remove the background around the subject and create a rectangle shape. We'll use the Pass tool to do this. The Pass tool is a great tool to accurately select the curves around the model. Go out to the File menu, select Open and navigate to the file and the image. I can see here in the preview of the image that the actual file size is quite big. Select Open. I'm going to change the image size first, so come up to the image menu and select Scale Image. Let's look in the dialog. From here we can manually change the size. When the chain on the right is closed, everything will scale in proportion. In the height value, I'll type in 1080 and hit enter on the keyboard. Now you can see that the width has scaled in proportion. I'll also change the resolution. I'm going to bring it up to 300, hit enter, and then scale. Now let's zoom in. To do this, I'll hold the control key and just roll the middle mouse button. Now come over to the layers panel and right click on the image layer. And from the menu, select add alpha channel. This will allow transparency. If you see it's already grayed out, then the image has an alpha channel. You can skip this part. Also, we're going to create a duplicate so click on the Duplicate Image button below the Layers panel. Then double click on the title and we'll change the name. I'll just type in Model. Now we can start to draw out the path around the model. So come over to the Toolbox and select the Path tool. Make sure in Settings the Edit Mode is set to Design. I'll start at the top of the head and work my way around. First of all I'll zoom in. Hold the control key down and roll the middle mouse button. To pan from side to side, hold the middle mouse button down and move the mouse. Click once to leave the node, then carry on clicking all around the subject, just inside the border. You can delete a node by Ctrl Z or Ctrl Shift and click on the node you want to remove. The last node that was placed will have a circular outline. All the other nodes, if you notice, are a solid white colour. You can move a node just by clicking on it and moving the mouse. I'm going to fast forward the video while I carry on drawing out the path around the subject. I'm placing the nodes close together to create smooth curves. However, you could also place less nodes and use the busier handles to create the curves. Both methods work well. I'll cut out the whole subject. You don't have to be precise, however, Try to keep up a good pace and it's easy to follow around the edges. I'm trying to keep the same distance between the nodes, except on the smaller curves I add more. Don't worry about cutting the leaves around the shoes either, or that shoelace. Okay, we're coming up the last leg. I'll just cut around this. Now we're nearly back at the beginning. I'll just add a couple of more nodes, then hold the control key down and click on the first node that I created. This will close the path. Now I'm going to zoom out. Now we've finished our path. Come over to the Settings panel and click on Selection from Path. Next, select the Move tool and this will disactivate the Path tool. Now the path is displayed with moving ants and everything inside the selection will be edited. However, we want to keep everything inside the selected area and delete everything outside the area. So come up to the Select menu and select Invert. Now come up to the Edit menu and select Clear, or just hit Delete on the keyboard. To be able to see the image that has just been cut out, 
we will have to turn off the visibility of the other image below. So come over to the Layers panel and click on the small eye icon. Before we can move on, we have to disactivate the marching ants. So come up to the Select menu and click on None. Let's go back over to the Layers panel and click on the visibility of the image layer. Also select the image layer. Next, we're going to create a rectangle shape for the photo effect. We will use the Path tool again to draw out the shape. Come up to the toolbox and select the Path tool. I'll place the first node about here, then the other one on the opposite side. One at the back, following the perspective of the curb. Then one more on the opposite side again. Then back to the first node. Hold the Control key down and hover over the first node, then click on it to close the path. I would like to be able to raise the two front corners slightly. So to do this, first of all we have to create an extra node in the centre. Come over to the middle of the segment, hold the control key down and click once to add a new node. I'll add a node on the back segment also, however we won't be adjusting the corners, you won't see the shadows there. Now come over to the left node and move it up slightly. Also here on the right side we'll do the same. Come over to the settings panel and click on select from path. Then select the move tool to disactivate the paths tool. Now we're going to create a copy just of the rectangle. So come up to the edit menu and select copy. Then come back into the edit menu and select paste as and choose new layer. Now this will paste a new layer over in the stack. Right click on the title and type in the name. I'll just type in photo. Next we're going to create a copy, so drop down and click on the duplicate layer button. Double click on the title and I'll change the name to frame. In case you can't see the marching ants, right click on the layer and select alpha to selection. Now come over to the foreground and background color selector. We're going to use white. If you can't see white, open the color selector for the foreground color and just copy the HTML notations, then click OK. Click hold and drag the white color box over to the rectangular selection. Now come up to the select menu and select shrink. In the dialog, add a value of 20 pixels and hit OK, then come up to the edit menu and select clear. Or just hit delete on the keyboard. And here you have your frame. Let's come up to select and select none. Let's remove the color from the background image. Come over to the layers panel and select the image layer. Then come up to the color menu and select saturation. And in the dialog, drag the scale slider down to zero, then hit OK. We could finish here if we want to. However, if we really want this image to pop, let's add a shadow below the photo. So come over to the Layers panel and click on Create a New Layer button. Change the name to Shadow and make sure in Filled With it's set to Transparency, then click OK. Make sure the new layer is below the photo and above the black and white image. We're going to use the path we created before, so come up to the Path tab and in the dialog click on the small button to make the path visible. Now select the Path tool and click on the path to activate it. Now click on the right and the left node and lower them a fraction so the whole segment is in a straight line. Come up to the settings and click on Selection from Path. Now the marching ants are displayed. Let's go over to the Paths dialog now and click on the small button to disactivate the path. Switch over to the Layers panel. Make sure you're on the shadow layer. Then come up to the toolbox and click on the Move tool to disactivate the path tool. OK, we're going to add a black colour to the selected area, so come up to the colour boxes, click on the small arrow to switch the background and foreground. Click in the colour box and grab the box and drag it over to the rectangle selection. Come over to the Layers panel and turn off the visibility for the photo and the frame. Now we can see the shadow. Then deselect the marching ants, come up to Select Menu and select None. We're going to add a blur filter to this so the edges aren't so sharp. So come up to Filters, Blur, Gaussian Blur. Make sure the Preview button is checked or you won't be able to see the blur effect. 
and set the value to about 5 or 6, then hit OK. I would like to move this layer a fraction. To do this, it will be easier if we first turn off the visibility of the other layers. Next, come up to the toolbox and grab the Move tool. Now just click on this layer and slowly drag it down a fraction. Then come over to the panels and make all the layers visible again. And now you can see a very subtle effect of a shadow. I might bring the opacity down, make sure you're on the shadow layer, and I'll bring it down to about 90. OK, I'm happy with this now. So we'll wrap up here. Thank you for watching, and I hope you found this video helpful, and I'll see you in the next video. Enjoy.